let us start with the intercoastal uh, spaces. When you say intercoastal spaces, that means you are indicating to uh, spaces located between the adjacent ribs. And you see here from the figure that uh, these spaces are filled by intercoastal muscles, intercoastal veins, nerves, arteries, and lymphatics. That means you have muscles, blood vessels, and nerves. And vessels and nerves between uh, these, um, uh, inside these spaces, in the intercostal spaces, I mean, we call them like neurovascular bundles. And they take the same name because they are between ribs in the intercostal spaces. We call them intercostal arteries, intercostal veins, and intercostal nerves, right? So let us start with the intercostal uh, muscles. Well, what you see here in this figure, just the three major types, still we have two other types. Uh, they are like uh, spur distributed uh, inside the thoracic or the line, the thoracic cavity there. So let us start with the, let me show you here is the three major. Uh, if you take a cross section from the thoracic um, cage here, you would see uh, that we have the external intercostal muscle, there is internal one, and there is the deepest one, which is the inner most. Look at the directions of the fibers. We'll talk about each one uh, in detail. So whatever these, uh, uh, regardless the direction of these fibers anyway, these muscles, external, external, internal, and your most one, they are innervated by intercostal nerves from T1 to T11. So what's the, you know, if you look to the thoracic cage again outside thorax in general, you would, uh, of course, conclude that these muscles strengthen the thoracic wall, number one, and most importantly, they are changing the thoracic volume when they, when they contract it. Some of them like elevated ribs, some of them like uh, tuberous uh, the uh, ribs, that means they change the thoracic volume during uh, breathing. So let us start with external intercostal muscle, the most external superficial one. This is the external, what you see here is the external intercostal muscle. You see, if you take a cross section, this is the external intercostal muscle. Look at the direction of the fibers. The, they look, the direction of the fibers, uh, it looks like um, someone put his hands inside his pocket, right? That means the direction is anterior inferiorly, like anteriorly, the fibers, the direction of the fibers, anteriorly and inferiorly. But the internal ones, we will talk about it anyway, it's perpendicular to it. That means it's, uh, uh, it's if, it, if this one is anterior inferior, that means this is posterior inferior. So it's opposite. Anyway, back to the external intercostal muscle, the most superficial one. Uh, now, it extends, or this kind, these muscles extend from, from where? From the tubercle of the ribs. That means you go back here. If, for example, this is the first rib that I can see, and this is the second rib, and so forth. This is the head. This is the neck, and this is the tubercle. You can watch the first lecture about the uh, ribs. Anyway, let us say here is the location of the tubercle of the second rib, and so forth. So from there, it extends from the tubercle of the rib all the way anteriorly until it reach the coastal cartilage. Look at the border of the coastal cartilage, very close to here. So it stops here, right? The external intercostal muscles stopped here. That means these muscles or this kind of muscle, the external one, doesn't continue and doesn't reach the sternum. Oh yeah, that means there is a gap. Look at it here. So it's not continue all the way anteriorly. So this gap should be filled filled by what? Look at this white sheath here. This is the, the same name. If this is the external intercostal muscle, this is external intercostal membrane. So this is the external intercostal membrane. Why this membrane? To continue the journey or to continue or to fill the gap uh, or the deficit that created by external intercostal muscle. Very simple. The external intercostal muscle stopped here at the co level of costal cartilage. That means it doesn't continue to the sternum, but it continued to there by external intercostal uh, membrane. 
That's it. So, innervated uh, by intercostal nerves T1 to T11, somebody can say, I would like to know where is the attachment or the origin and insertion of this muscle. Well, it's very simple. Look at the um, rib here and the rib below. So, this is the superior border of the rib, which is round. And this is the inferior border of the rib. Ah, on the inferior border of the rib, there is a kind of a groove. We call it costal groove. This groove is important because it gives like um, a space for the vessels and nerves, intercostal vessels and nerves to be like hidden there, right? So this is the subcostal um, uh, groove. But the subcostal groove has, what do we call it? Uh, let me show you here. Um, it's it's a clear, I would say, here. There is a ridge here, but we don't concern. There's a lateral ridge and medial ridge. Leave it for now. We have nothing to do about, uh, we have nothing to do with these ridges, but because the external intercostal muscle from its name, it originates from uh, the um, outside. Let us say, if this is the, for example, this rib, the superior rib, so from the inferior margin of the rib above to the superior margin of the rib below from the inferior margin of the rib above to the inferior to the superior margin of the rib below that means it's completely outside right so keep this in your mind but most importantly to know the function of the external intercostal muscle yes imagine when it's contracted it will pulls it will pull sorry the ribs up that means it elevates the uh, ribs that means um, it's active the during the inspiration during the inspiration when you take a breath you mean that that means you need to increase the space of the thoracic cavity that means we need to move the ribs uh, superiorly uh, during the inflammation that, uh, infl uh, inspiration that means the external intercostal muscle is very active during the inspiration during inspiration so uh, remember that it's external e but the function is uh, uh, the function um, uh, works like during the in inspiration right now opposite to the external intercostal muscle we have the intermediate layer which is the internal intercostal muscle here look at the internal intercostal muscle look at the fibers which is posterior inferiorly not anterior inferiorly no posterior inferiorly which is perpendicular to the fibers of external oblique anyway so and also it's opposite to the uh, origin of the uh, external intercostal muscle that means the internal intercostal muscle started from the sternum started from here so if you remove this external one that means the internal intercostal muscle started from the sternum which is uh, very interesting right it started from the sternum all the way back until it reached the angle of the rib until it reached the angle of the rib that means it doesn't continue to the vertebral column no that means there is a gap this gap should be filled by a membrane similar to the external one but this membrane it takes the same name of the muscle we call it the internal intercostal membrane internal intercostal membrane from the back right from the back so uh, what about the attachment so this is the internal intercostal muscle so uh, it uh, attached to the lateral edge we mentioned in the previous slide that this is the costal groove and this is the lateral edge of the costal groove and this is the medial edge of costal groove so from the lateral edge of costal groove which is like sharp here 
right? This is the lateral edge of the coastal groove. So um, uh, attach the, this is the superior attachment of the internal coastal muscle. And in, uh, inferiorly, uh, which is very easy, to the superior margin of the rib here below, right? Just deep to the external, of course. And again, uh, the innervation the same from T1, that means intercostal nerves from T1 to T11. Uh, now, what about the function? Well, we mentioned uh, it's, um, let us say, uh, the origin and insertion and location and uh, uh, started from where, ends and where, and continue by but also, so, so it's mainly opposite to the external, and the plus it's opposite to external intercostal muscle by its function. So the internal intercostal is very active during what? The expiration. This is a fear. Why? Because the internal intercostal muscle, look at the direction of the fibers, because of that, it pulls the um, ribs below. That means uh, it moves the ribs inferiorly, right? And for that reasons, it's good for uh, expiration, right? So it's more active, uh, mostly active during the expiration. Okay, this is the internal intercostal muscle. Now, in the next slide, we will move to the most inner one. But here is just a figure, you can watch it. This is the external intercostal, and this is the internal intercostal. And now we will move to the innermost one, which is the innermost intercostal muscle. This muscle is the deepest layer. Now, this is the external. You can, you know, of course, right and left. This is the external we finished, right? Look at the external intercostal muscle. It started from the back all the way. This is the external, right? But it ends here at the costal cartridge, and it continued by external intercostal membrane to reach the sternum. Now, let us move to the internal. I'm reminding you guys. The internal is opposite. The internal intercostal muscle started from the sternum all the way until it reached the angle. Now, it continues by a membrane similar to the external, but we call it internal intercostal membrane until it reaches the vertebral column. Okay, now what about the deepest one, which is the innermost? This is the innermost. It's the deepest layer. It's incomplete layer. That means, you know, divided mainly into three parts. Look, this is the innermost. This is one part. This is one part. And this is one part. Anyway, connected by membranes here, right? And, um, Interestingly, the innermost intercostal muscle, the innermost, look look here, let me maximize it, um, or let us move back here, okay, look at the direction of the fibers here, it's very similar to the internal intercostal muscle, that means the innermost, the direction of the fiber of innermost intercostal muscle is very similar to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, internal intercostal muscle. That means it's also similar, not just the direction of the fiber, but also similar to the function. That means it's uh, uh, it's active during uh, it's active uh, during uh, expiration. That means it acts like internal intercostal muscle and also innervated from T1 to T11, similar to the other muscles. And now you know where is it and the direction of fibers and the function. Let me show you the attachment of this muscle, which is like interesting. Let me maximize this, right? So, and use this pin. You know now that this is the costal groove, right? And this is the lateral, uh, let us say, edge, and this is the medial edge uh, of costal groove. We mentioned that the internal intercostal, not the innermost, the internal attached to the lateral edge of costal groove of the rib above, right? But the innermost, no, it attached to the medial edge of the costal groove. This is the costal groove, right? To the medial edge of the costal groove of the rib above and inserted into the inner like go like 
inferiorly to the rib below and instead of the superior margin of the rib uh, below here all of it like attached at this so anyway the innermost here right medially most importantly here look at the vessels and nerves where they are located yes this is very important especially in exams right we will talk we will talk in details about this but for now let me show you that the neurovascular bundle located between the internal intercostal and innermost. Look, they are located between the um, uh, these uh, 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 two muscles between the internal and innermost. Uh, and if you look, we will talk also about it, uh, which is not shown here. Maybe yes, after like the two slides we'll talk about it but for now you see the in, the innermost muscle the innermost muscle lined by a fascia called endothoracic fascia endothoracic fascia we'll talk about it that means this here's the innermost lined here by a fascia called endothoracic fascia endothoracic fascia i will show you now we mentioned we have a three major muscles external internal and innermost but also we have like uh, small muscles distributed here and there mainly let us start with the subcostal muscles not intercostal no we call it subcostal because they are internally you look to the vertebral column anteriorly and this is the these are ribs um, uh, come out from there articulated of course with the vertebral uh, with the thoracic vertebrae here anyway so the subcostal muscles are distributed mainly in the lower part of the thoracic wall posteriorly and uh, their fibers also again similar to the internal intercostal muscle so they are originated um, from the uh, let us say internal surface of the uh, lower ribs here like from internal surface of those ribs and close of course to the angles right look at the location they are not here not there so they are close to the angles of the uh, ribs and let me erase look at their insertion so they are inserted in the upper border of the second or third rib for example if this is one rib so the next rib right in the upper border of the next step but sometime like this muscle to originates from here and skipped the that rib right jump to the third rib this is one two three for example so you know what i mean so again their function uh similar to the internal intercostal muscle the t press ribs right what we have also if you look to the uh, sternum from the back internally you will see like this shape like a star shape or whatever you name it right it's like slips four to five slips varied between people right so these like slips originate from the back of the lower part of the sternum and this i void the process from the back right the lower part of the sternum is a vital process and inserted as you see here in the internal surface of costal cartilage from three let us say to uh, six and again mostly the tuberous costal cartilage right okay um, let us say somebody can say okay what the function of these muscles will you know they I, I think it's a kind of um, it's another way to decrease the gap that exists there right so because both they are located at the i would say in the same plane of uh, innermost intercostal muscle because you know you have external intercostal you have internal intercostal you have innermost innermost usually three pieces or three parts so this like defect there i think it's a kind of close the gap here or there of innermost that's why we have these kinds of uh, muscles right so here's like a cadavers you see the external these are ribs right so you have the uh, external intercostal muscle but look the external intercostal muscle stopped here and continue by membrane 
not shown, right? Now, opposite to the external intercostal muscle and started from the sternum, this is the sternum, right? So, uh, from there, look, started the internal intercostal muscle. Here is the internal intercostal muscle, very clear because it's removed, right? This is the internal intercostal muscle. Look at the direction of the fiber. It's perpendicular to the external one, right? Once we remove both, we will see the, again, the um, uh, innermost intercostal muscle. But unfortunately, again, this is the internal intercostal. And deep to it, you have the innermost intercostal muscle, right? Here is you look into the... Um, uh, sternum and thoracic cavity from inside, right? This is the sternum from the back. So look at the muscle here. Look at these, uh, uh, what do we call it, uh, four to five uh, uh, slips. So this is what we call it transversus thoracic muscle. Transversus thoracic muscle. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four, and this is the lower part of the sternum and xivoid process. This is transversus thoracic muscle. Okay, here's, uh, let me show you um, the, again, remove the skin and the superficial fascia. Look, this is the external intercostal muscle, deep to it internal intercostal muscle, similar to it deep, the innermost one. And we mentioned that the neurovascular bundle, vessels and nerves, they are located between the internal intercostal and innermost, right? Now, uh, we mentioned that the innermost intercostal muscle lined internally by what we call it endothoracic fascia. You see the yellow one? This is the endothoracic fascia. That, in another way, it's the fascia that uh, say, um, I would say, um, that's, that, that this is the border or let us stop the uh, muscles and nerves and thoracic stuff and let us start a new journey with lungs and um, parietal pleura. Okay, so uh, this is the endothoracic fascia. That means the endothoracic fascia lined the innermost intercostal muscle. And also, the endothoracic fascia also covered, lastly, by parietal pleura. This is the parietal pleura. That means you have external intercostal muscle, internal intercostal muscle, you have innermost intercostal muscle. The innermost lined by endothoracic fascia, and the endothoracic fascia also lined by parietal pleura. Now, this is the thoracic wall, my friend, and let us stop. So, here you will get a space. There is a space, potential space. Now, and here you have the lungs, and the lungs, you know, covered by visceral pleura. Visceral pleura adheres to it. So, and this is the thoracic cavity. Here is the pleural cavity, sorry, right? Filled by a pleural uh, fluid. Anyway, now somebody can say, yes, I know, this is the, uh, I got it, this is the endothoracic uh, fascia, but does it extend up? Yes, look at the here, we, we talked, I think, about it uh, in this lecture. So, um, again, these are ribs that filled by intercostal muscles and innermost and so forth. Now, deep to it, you have the endothoracic um, fascia. The endothoracic fascia extends up once when, when it's above the first rib. Now the endothoracic fascia will be changed. The name just changed and it becomes like thicken and form something called supra, supra pleural membrane. Supra pleural membrane. We talked about it at the beginning of this lecture, right? This is the supra Pleural membrane tent like structure attached to the first rib and to the transversal process of C7 and to the uh, fascia here, um, uh, circling the structure going to the neck. That means the endothoracic fascia that you see here, it extends up and above the pleura here, 
and lang is the plural and now it's formed something called it's the same but now it's called supraplural membrane okay and also the endothelial fascia goes down between the diaphragm and because this is the diaphragm diaphragm and uh, plural okay